Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Before the Service. It's such a special day here today at St. James in the City because we have with us our beloved Bishop John Taylor. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Gracious Rector. <laughs> it's great to have you here, and I just have to say a little a fun fact about Bishop Taylor. He is the most social media savvy among <laughs> bishops. He's already posted all morning long about us before we even finished our first service, so you might wonder, uh, those of you who might not be experts on the life and work of bishops, what I'm holding here. Would you like to tell us what this beautiful thing is? Well, Kate, I'd be happy to, and I must say you wear it well, so oh. we should keep that in mind <laughs> yeah, right. for your future bishop needs. But this is what we call a crozier. And, uh, the thing is about the church, uh, 2,000 years of history and tradition, there are many answers to these questions. And so either what Kate and I tell you is the gospel truth, we're making it up as we go along, or if you've heard something different, it's possibly because you maybe came up in a setting where there's a different tradition. But in the Episcopal Church, uh, generally the diocesan bishop, which is to say the adjudicatory, the person who holds the canonical and the fiduciary responsibility in the life of the bishop, yeah. is the one who carries what's called a crozier. And it, um, it, I think everybody knows where it comes from. It comes from a shepherd's staff, because Christians follow uh, the good shepherd, Jesus Christ, and so early on, overseers or bishops of the church would carry a staff. Usually the crook is open, and so you get a lot of gags about how you could use it as a hook. John, if you preach too long, someone's <laughs> going to grab your crozier and use it as a hook. This particular crozier was a traveling crozier belonging to Bishop Francis Eric Bloy, who was the fourth bishop of Los Angeles, and he served, get this, from 1948. Wow. To 1973. <gasps> From the Truman administration yes. to the Nixon Amazing. administration. With so much change in the church, particularly issues over gender and, and, and civil rights, Bishop Bloy uh, kept up with his times, and this mm -hmm. was his traveling crozier. And I've been using it late. It's kind of top heavy, though, isn't it's, it? I, I was carrying it out here. <laughs> it's kind of weird, isn't it? It's, it's very. And weird. here's the other thing. So, the, so say, say um, we're talking about uh, an icon of Saint Catherine. So, it's told that. If uh, so, face, uh, face the camera. Mm -hmm. or, okay. So, right. So, the camera's got to move to you, though, because you're not so squared off. Okay. So, mm -hmm. if you see an icon when mm -hmm. Kate's holding her crozier and the things pointing forward, it means she's alive. If the icon shows it like that, it means Whoa. her life insurance has matured. Oh no, turn it back around. <laughs> and we have more, more show and tell this morning. Oh my. And this beautiful thing is a... This is called a miter, which is the hat that bishops wear. And it's just quite a thing. It's quite a thing. <laughs> because first of all, I can pretend when I'm wearing it that I'm not bald. Aww. I can pretend that I have hair. I don't know much about it, <laughs> except to say that of course it's another symbol of Episcopal authority. Mm -hmm. And anyone elected a bishop, whether a bishop diocesan, mm -hmm. a bishop suffragan, or someone assisting as a bishop after they have been elected elsewhere and they come to a diocese to serve. If you're a bishop, you wear a crozier. And the thing that stuck with me, a lot of what we wear, sometimes you'll see Kate wearing a stole. It's kind of like two, 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 two uh, neckties uh, on either side of her neck. And actually the stole is borrowed from what Roman senators wore. And in Roman festivals, people would wear garlands down their backs. And so the, the, uh, these parts of the crozier are thought to be borrowed from the garlands that people would wear during Roman festivals. It's a reminder of how much Christianity has appropriated from other faiths. Mm -hmm. And Kate, who's a pretty good scholar of the church in her own right, will tell you that a lot of our liturgy and practices have been borrowed from Judaism, which is pretty ironic in view of 2,000 years of Christian anti-Semitism. <sighs> over now, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> well, another question that I have, now that we've looked at, at all this fun show and tell, is, um, what is what is the thing you love the most about being a bishop? Because I know you, you're a very joyful man, and I know that you you always seem like you're having a good time, but what's your favorite thing about this work, this vocation? 
everyone brings mm -hmm. to whatever the vocation is, mm -hmm. whatever, whether it's a church vocation mm -hmm. or a secular vocation, we bring our whole yes. galaxy of influences from family of origin mm -hmm. stuff to temperamental preferences. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a yearning for a kind of an inner kind of loneliness and separateness that has a little bit to do with family of or origin stuff. So I, I like to be with people. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like to imagine in the way that you do. Mm -hmm. I like to imagine a church is kind of an extended family. The people who really are curious about each other, who are looking out for one another, mm -hmm. who are able and willing to reach across difference, mm -hmm. sort of human-made differences of race and ethnicity, identification, orientation, uh, and age and geography and especially socioeconomics because yeah. this church is so well known for its ministries to the mm -hmm. least of these. Mm -hmm. Those who are all around us without enough to eat and a place to live. St. James has a heart for these people because you're reaching across difference and you're making family. So when I get to come to a place like this uh -huh. yeah. and, and be with those both in front of and behind the cameras yeah. and meet all the lay leaders and all the congregants and learn about the interesting places they've come from and the interesting things they do, this is what makes me the happiest. I would do a Sunday visitation every day if I could. Oh my gosh, and that's not what all bishops would say. Oh. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, that is a great gift to all of us because your enthusiasm is palpable and we are so blessed to have you here this morning. Thank you, Thank Kate. you, thank you, thank you for being with us at St. James in the City. Thank you for a wonderful, wonderful morning and for the good ministry you do here in the heart of our city. Bye, everyone. Enjoy the service. Bye-bye. God bless you. Take care.